In the name of the glorious Trinity, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Glory be to the everlasting mercies which sent you to us, O Christ, the light of the world and the life of all. Give us wisdom by your law and enlighten our impulses by your knowledge. Sanctify our souls by your truth and grant that we may be obedient to your words and may fulfill your commandments at every hour. O you who enlightens the rational with the knowledge of your greatness, do enlighten, O my Lord, our thoughts, that we may meditate upon your holy and divine scriptures at all times, O Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Welcome everybody to the Assyrian Church of the East Modern Day Podcast Ministries Double Edged Sword. Receive the peace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing. Um, Let us all glorify God for all his provisions, his gifts that he showers upon us uh, to grant us the strength and the courage to come together and to discuss his holy words, the holy scriptures, and to to enlighten ourselves, beloved, with the true path, uh, to uh, have a better understanding of our Christian obligation as being the children of God, what that actually entails. That being the child of God is not only pertaining to gaining the kingdom of heaven, that is the ultimate, that is the gold. But we have a lot of obligations, we have a lot of responsibilities to uh, God himself, praise be to his name, to our fellow Christian brothers and sisters, and to our friends, the unbelievers, and lastly to ourselves, um, that we may all do ourselves good and do everyone good so that we are on the path of righteousness and heading for that amazing, glorious day when the Lord returns to take his bride, his church, his holy body into the bridal chamber being the kingdom of heaven we're talking about yoking last uh, episode was yoking yoking with unbelievers um, and basically to sum it up that we uh, being the children of god through our faith and baptism in jesus christ according to galatians chapter 3 verse 26 um, are children of light and we must be uh, very cautious and we must tread uh, cautiously as to how we continue to live that title, that blessing as the children of God. And we are not to, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to use the correct word, we're not to take it lightly and to abuse that uh, that gift, that title, that gracious provision uh, that God has given us. Uh, by the grace uh, of Jesus Christ, being His children, we are we need to preserve that. We need to, um, you know, going back to s- salt and light. Um, we need to truly be that savior uh, as the children of God in the lives of those who uh, do not have that. And and we ascertain that truly we are to um, not to engage any in any relationships <clears throat> with the unbelievers as far as. Uh, uh, not friendship, but as far as uh, relationships of uh, the boyfriend and girlfriend sort, and um, and most importantly in marriage, but we are to uh, continue to engage to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ and to bring those who have not been exposed, who have not been introduced, and have no idea of what Jesus did on the cross for humanity. Not for the Christians only, but for humanity. We are constantly to be um, reflecting, to be um, uh, testifying uh, the grace that is obtained through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, alone. And to bring people to that light of the world, who is Jesus himself. And we also ascertain that we too are the light of the world. Today what I'd like to speak about is, um, you know, um, as St. Paul says in his uh, epistle to the Corinthians, 
uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. And I read this last week, but I'll read it again just as a refresher. And Paul goes on to say, I have written to you in a letter not to mix with fornicators, but I'm not talking about fornicators who are in this world uh, or about the greedy or about extortioners or about idol worshippers. Otherwise, you would be obligated to part, depart from the world. Now, he's talking about the non-Christians, let's say, without, those who are without. But what about those who are uh, within, those who are within Christianity, who have received uh, the uh, the holy sacrament of uh, baptism and have been clothed with Christ and received the title of children of God. Paul goes on to say, and this is what we want to talk about, you know, um, um, you know, the scriptures are quite vocal and quite um, empowering in the lives of those who have received Jesus as their Lord and their Savior uh, and as their King and their life giver and the figure of their sins. So Paul goes to, on to say that, listen, I'm not talking about those that are without, those that are outside of the faith. As I said, what we need to do is we need to be a great example for those of Christ for those who are outside of the faith. But he says, I'm writing to you, meaning the faithful, those who are in the church. And Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 5, now keeping in mind, Corinth was a very corrupt city. Um, um, uh, you know, harlotry and um, it was an evil city. And Paul is writing to the church that was in Corinth. But this doesn't just restrict, restrict it to the church in Corinth. This is restricting, this is a general letter that is read. These epistles are read uh, uh, on a Sunday service. So it's for all the churches today in the world, not just in Corinth. I have written to you, meaning the brother, brothers, not to mix. If there is one who is called a brother... So, one who is called a brother, my brother, meaning not biological, but spiritual, my brother is he who is also the son of God, and we become the children of God. So, he's talking about Christians. If there is one who is called a brother, and he is a fornicator, or a greedy man, or an idol worshipper, or an abuser, or drunkard, or a robber, or thief, with whom you are not even to eat bread. Wow. Not even to eat bread. <clears throat> Some may say, yes, this pertains mainly solely, solely to the Holy Eucharist, but Paul is actually implying both. So if I am not to share my bread with a brother who is caught in these sins, how much more the Holy Eucharist. And then Paul goes on to say, for what business have I to judge outsiders? Judge the insiders. That's what it says. That's what Paul is saying. Judge the insiders. We have an obligation. We have a responsibility. Now, judging does not mean to condemn someone to hell or to grant them the bliss of the kingdom of heaven. That is not mine, not yours. That is Christ's. Christ is the final righteous judge but judgment does not pertain to those the you know the, the condemning but judgment also means that we are to correct we are to call a spade a spade you know jesus says a tree is known by its fruit so if i see an example if i see an, a person um uh, uh, exiting a building through a window with a television uh, in his hand his or her hand and um, with a balaclava over the head and, um, and uh, running towards the car to put that television in the car, I think I'll make a righteous judgment to say that this guy's a thief because he just exited the, the apartment through the window, um, uh, you know, wearing, you know, I gave you the description. So, yes, we can judge. I mean, Jesus Christ himself... A tree is known by its fruit. You can make a judgment on a tree by its fruit. If someone constantly cusses, every second word is the cuss word, you can make that righteous judgment and say, this person is in sin because he is constantly cussing. If someone constantly gossips and slanders people, 
you can righteously make that judgment say this person is a slanderer is a uh, is a uh, one who likes to gossip so that's why paul says judge the insiders but god judges judges the outsiders he goes on to say and then he he, he conclu- concludes 1 corinthians chapter 5 by saying remove the evil from your midst remove the evil from your midst So what is Paul trying to tell us as Christians that within even our Christian brothers and sisters, when we find are living in a lifestyle that is contrary to to the Holy Scriptures and to the faith, let's not encourage. Beloved, St. James says that if we know sin, he who knows sin and continues or and let, let me paraf- paraphrase it. Pa- paraphrase it. He who knows sin and does not speak out and does not take ac- action is also a sinner. So when we see a brother who is a Christian in sin, living in sin, and we encourage it by embracing and compromising and justifying, we are doing two things. Number one, we become co heirs of that sin. We become co-accomplices of that sin. And number two, we are destroying the person even more. I think it's in in 1 Corinthians again, Paul says that if a brother who is caught up in, you know, he's talking about um, uh, a man uh, taking uh, his mother's, uh, sorry, a man taking his father's wife as as a wife. And he goes on to speak about that. And he says, if a person is found in this era and he's actually rebuking the church as well that you are so okay with that again power phrasing but he goes on to say that such a person who is in the church who is a brother who is caught in such a sin you are to give up not give sorry not give up i'm sorry no paul doesn't use those words he doesn't say give up he says deliver deliver the body deliver that person to satan that means deliver his body to satan so that you can one more time gain and um, rescue the soul and saint john chrysostom one of the church fathers comments on this on delivering the body to satan he says opening onto him the doors of repentance and delivering up such as one as it were to a schoolmaster see the church that this is where the church has received her authority to expel people from the church you know we have and i'm going to say the wishy-washy christians who only think christ is only love and no nothing else just love christ is love god is loving beloved god is a consuming fire that's what saint paul says right not Jenard, not pasha Jenard, or priest Jenard, or the assyrian church of the east or this church or that church god is a consuming fire it is awful to fall into the hands of the righteous god god is loving He is abound in love. He is rich in love. There is no limit to his love and his grace. But at the same time, he is a righteous judge as well. God cannot be loving to sin. God hates sin. So too, the church, when a brother is found in sin, in mortal sins, has the authority to expel a brother from the church or a sister from the church. Now, Expelling does not mean that they totally give up, that the church gives up on such a person. No, it's a disciplinary action. When a student, what St. John Chrysostom is saying, when a student is patana, like I was, oh, if I tell you about my school days, St. John's John's Park High School, those who, um, back in 1982, I think it was, yeah, You know what I did in the science class, right? Yeah, let's not go there, right? I was constantly taken to the headmaster's office. But, you know, I didn't learn. I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn the the beating from my father. But in any case, um, I would be taken to the schoolmaster so that the schoolmaster could 
impose disciplinary actions on me so that I could one more time be reinstated back into the classroom to be a good boy, to listen, to pay attention, so that at the end of the year, I would get my grades and leave school and enter college and universities, what have you. <coughs> so this is what the church does. See, with uh, uh, when it comes to a husband and wife, when they have issues, they quickly talk about divorce. Oh, um, that's it, we can't do it anymore, so we're filing for divorce. Well, the church says, no, 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 no. By the way, let me tell you something. That letter that your attorney gives you, those 10, 12 pages decreeing that this marriage, is that means nothing to the church. Right? A county clerk cannot undo what God has done through the church and the priesthood. Okay. So, But what the church says is, no, 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 don't quickly jump into conclusions, don't jump the gun, don't do things in haste. Let's just separate for now. You go and live with your parents, you go back and live with your parents, and then let the church take its toll, let the church be involved in this relationship because there is a possibility of remorse, of missing one another. There is a possibility of, uh, you know, both parties really thinking about where they want to head and then the church is uh, the the children come into play and then you know god willing through god's through prayer and fasting and, and continued consultation with the priest the husband and wife will come back one more time they've only separated they're only changing their their addresses their mailing or their their living address not divorce so that's what the church does and that's what we need to do beloved please mm-hmm. I beg you, let us not compromise and encourage sin. Let us not do that. We are digging the ground. We are paving the way to eternal damnation for those who are living in sin. And if you want to know who is classified as living in sin, read the Holy Scriptures when the do's are don'ts in your life or someone else's life and the don'ts are do's in someone else's life or your life, then we are nine out of ten times living in sin. No, 9.99 out of ten times living in sin. So what are we to do is to continuously pray for that person. You know, and I always mention people think praying is a is a cop-out. It's an easy way out praying for that person, constantly talking, communicating with that person, bringing that person to church, bringing that person to the, to the priest to get spiritual counseling, to be offered that spiritual counseling. You know, and, and, and sometimes parents tend to do that. I know of cases, let me give you an example, where the son hasn't held any employment whatsoever. But all of a sudden, the son or the daughter are driving up in BMWs and then they walk in with a plasma television, a 68-inch plasma television. And for mum's birthday, she gets the uh, Pierre Cardin, is there Pierre Cardin um, uh, bags for women, Yves Saint Laurent, whatever it is, right? And the parents don't even question. And the parents don't even ask, son, where do you get these things from? And then they start compromising and they start busking in that that glamour. And then when the police turn up with the sheriff and raid the house and cuff the child, either the son or the daughter, and that the child has been sentenced to 20 to 30 years in jail or in prison, and then the mother starts crying, saying, I did not know. Well, the question is, hey, I'm sorry. No, you knew very well. Your son or your daughter had no employment, so you didn't ask where are you getting these these goods from, right? Because we begin to compromise. We begin to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, turning the blind eye. We should not be doing that with our Christian brothers and sisters. And in particular, let me even bring it down closer to home. You know, every Christian today is associated with a family, meaning a church family, 
Okay, so this, let's say, for example, this is the um, the Assyrian Church of the East uh, podcast. Not limited only to those who are members of the Assyrian Church of the East. It's, you know, the word of God you cannot limit to. But we need to bring it down and say, for example, within the church even, within our group of friends, if a friend is caught in sin, you know, St. Paul says, you who are spiritual, don't compromise, don't embrace, don't encourage, don't justify, don't find excuses for that person, but be ready to rebuke so that you can correct the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures are, one of the purpose of the Holy Scriptures are for correction. Those Scriptures that are, have been inspired by the Holy Spirit are good for correcting. We must correct one another. Yes, it is hard Yes, how can, you're telling me, Rabbi, that a friend of 20, 30 years, I'm just supposed to totally um, um, take out of my life and have nothing to do with that person? Well, no, I didn't say that. I said that you are not to uh, mingle in the same sin. You are not to compromise that lifestyle. You are there to always correct. And yes, if there is no correcting, if there is no repentance, well, it's it's for the best you know when 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 you go to the doctor and the doctor needs to um, operate on you it's not a good thing he cuts you up he opens you he puts a knife to your skin or sutures they call it, I think yeah well, let's call it a knife to your skin he opens you he cuts you he makes you bleed and so I've seen some operations like back operations I saw one operation where this person had a back problem the doctor had a pliers on one of the disc bones and he was jumping up and down trying to break the disc and I thought my god what's he, is he trying to kill this person no and I'm sure if the person wasn't under the the um, what is the anesthesia anesthesia yeah that person would be, would be would be dead, but the pain that the the force that the doctor was um, was uh, inflicting was for the good of that person. Sometimes we need to cause pain. We need to cause heartbreak, and that's you know Saint Paul says that. Saint Paul says in his in his um, epistle to I believe it's the Corinthians that. It saddens me that I have saddened you. Again, let me paraphrase it, right? It saddens me. It, I don't take pleasure to, to cause sadness and grief. It grieves me to grieve you. But I'm happy that I grieve you because your grieving is good for your repentance. And I'm not saying that you totally write off someone and totally condemn someone to, to eternal damnation. No, but... At times when we want to do good, we have to hurt someone. A child who is disobedient every now and then, and this is the book of Proverbs, do not withhold the rod from your child. Sometimes maybe the child needs disciplining. And it's not because the parents hate. No, it's for the good of the child. So in our relationship, we need to not compromise the holiness of Christianity. This is very important, the sanctity of Christianity, the sanctity of being called the children of God. Unfortunately, I'm going to admit, and I'll probably be reprimanded for this, but you know what? Let God be glorified and let, you know, let God, let Christ increase, let me decrease. This is the problem with churches today. This is the problem we have with churches. Being shy to speak about openly speak about the sin that today the world is 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 portraying being shy to speak about uh, the the immorality that some of our christian brothers and sisters and children are involved in but we shouldn't because being shy is being destructive in the life of that person we need to say it as it is you know when we have um we have um pre premarital sessions for uh, a fiancé and a fiancée who uh, intend to be married. And during those sessions, for those who have, uh, who have undergone those sessions with me, I speak sometimes explicitly and I see in the faces of uh, the couple, you know, a little bit of discomfort, but that doesn't bother me. 
it won't bother me if the hus- the the couple stand up and leave the room and say you're very explicit because the scriptures are explicit. We need to be very careful, especially um, in in a marriage life. Okay, so so. Our obligation is not to compromise. It's not to say it's okay when it's not okay. But we are not to condemn. We cannot condemn. And we cannot ad hoc grant the kingdom of heaven for whoever that we think um, is suitable or, or, or we love or we have uh, you know, feelings for. We need, to be, we need to call a spade a spade as Jesus Christ did. Never compromised was always straight to the point why. You know when he said to the, the lady at the well, the Canaanite, he said, yeah, you have five husbands and this one that you're living with is not your husband. Bang, right, straight in the face, smack, right? Didn't say, well, I know your circumstances. Well, you know, now you're going to change your lifestyle. No, he said it as it is. And that changed the woman's lifestyle who went and preached to the whole village and brought the whole village to uh, to Christ, we had a a question about um, in a in a marriage relationship. You know, sometimes in a marriage relationship, we have a, a one sided um, um, commitment in faith, either the husband or the wife. You know, what does a husband do who is so on fire for Jesus Christ, but the wife is mediocre? Or the wife has no zeal for the Lord or the faith, or vice versa. One verse comes to mind, 1 Corinthians 7, 13. And this is talking about an unbeliever, husband or a wife. Paul says, St. Paul says, The woman that has an unbelieving husband, and he is content to dwell with her, let her not leave her husband. So if a woman, I mean, you know... We need to understand, Paul is writing at an age, at at an era where Christianity was thriving. So in a pagan family, the husband or the wife would accept the Lord Jesus Christ, but the other partner would not. So, um, and they were pre-married. They were married before the conversion. Paul is saying, "Let let there be no divorce. Paul goes on to say, because the wife... Through the wife, the the husband will be also sanctified. So bringing it home, if we have a husband who is not on fire or a wife who is not on fire, but the other partner is, well, continue to be on fire because you are probably the scriptures or the Bible that uh, the husband or the wife is reading. Continue to pray Continue to be loving and to understanding. Don't push anyone into faith. We can listen. We cannot go and ram the scriptures in Bible people's faces. We cannot Bible bash. There was a term called Bible bashing. So you have the Bible and you bash people with your Bible. We don't do that. Christians are not uh, requested and are not being commanded to do that. Christ didn't come and bash himself onto people. Christ didn't bash anyone into believing in him. Christ actually said, he who desires to follow me, desires to follow me, let him take up, deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So just continue to pray. You be that beacon of attraction to Christ for your partner. Always showing love, always showing respect. Or, you know, if it's a wife... In this scenario, well, Paul says that wives are to be, oh, I'm going to say a word and then we're going to start writing comments. Here we go. I'm going to open myself. But don't jump the gun. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, be subject to your husbands as to our Lord. So if you're a Christian-fearing, God-loving Jesus worshipping on fire for the Lord, you need to be subject to your husbands. But don't compromise the faith because Jesus says, he who loves husband or wife or son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So when it comes to your Lord, no, you do not compromise the the Lord. But you are subject to your husband in love, in respect, 
in peace, in honor, in faithfulness. Because the man is the head of the woman, just as Christ is also the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. But just as the church is subject to Christ, see, the church is the wife. The wife resembles the church. But just as the church is subject to Christ, in this way also wives are to their husbands in all things. But he goes on to say, so before husbands uh, punching the air and saying, yes, there you go, in your face, relax. You have big shoes to fill yourself, dearest husband. Husbands, love your wives. He didn't say for the wives to love their husbands. So that, that, does that mean that wives are not to love their husband, but they just only need to be subject? No, obviously not. Love is is the key but listen listen to why paul is saying husbands love your wives as christ also loves his church remember the church meaning the dreadful stench the people did not love christ first there was an enmity between god and man god loved us jesus loved us jesus came down and took the church as his bridegroom because he loved and that's why we are subject to Christ, but we also are subject because of our love to Christ, but he loved us first. So going to that question that what do I do if my if my husband is not as zealous as I am for Christ, is not on fire for Christ and doesn't read scripture and attends church occasionally, does not um, have so much, uh, you know, is not so serious uh, uh, in, his, in his or her faith. What am I to do? Well, you continue to live as husband and wife. You continue to love one another, be faithful to one another, be understanding, but at the same time, be prayerful for one another. You know, everyone has their own time. The prodigal son lived with his father along with his brother. Time came for the prodigal son who decided to leave the father. Okay, but... At that moment, he loved his father, but he didn't respect and, and truly understand that by asking for your share in the wealth, you are, uh, you are connotating that, father, you have died because the, the wealth would not go, or the, the, the inheritance would not go to the children unless the father was dead. So he's indirectly saying, well, to me, you're dead. Give me my half. So he went and he got to the point where he was eating pig poo, I always say that, pig poo, that's what he was eating. But he came back. That was the time for this son to really respect and understand what the father had for him when he was in his father's house. And the, the, the son that was obedient came to a point that we learned that his obedience, well, then was circumstantial because it cut him. He didn't even want to go into that uh, feast and he had, to, you know, the father had to come out and and basically beg the son to come and come and rejoice. Your brother was dead and now he is alive. He was um, lost and now he is found. Everyone has their own timing, has their own pace. But we do not give up and we do not compromise. Let me finish it with this. Do not compromise the sanctity of Christianity. Do not compromise the holiness of Christ by whom we have been called with anyone. When time comes to draw the line, draw that line. But in love, in peace, and in understanding. So if we have friends, we have brothers and sisters, cousins, relatives, who are engaged in immorality, in sin, we are to correct St. Paul says, you who are, who are in the spirit, if a brother is called uh, uh, in sin, you who are in the spirit, you must correct that person. But if, you're, if your brother uh, 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 be, be in, in a position to correct that person, but be careful that you do not also fall into that same trap and same temptation. So within, let us not compromise and be always ready to hurt someone, I mean spiritually, not physically, emotionally maybe also, psychologically also, with feelings, so that we can gain that person back one more time. And that's what the church does. As I said, the church has authority to expel 
immoral people from the congregation because one bad apple, you know the rest. So the church has that authority to expel, but not to expel, to give up and to give away and to condemn. To expel so that it can one more time reintroduce and regain that soul through repentance, through absolution from the church, so that that person can be one more time reconciled to the body of Christ and the flock, which is the church. So that is always glorify Christ. Put Christ first always in any relationship. If Christ is at any time compromised, walk away from that relationship and continue to pray and to fast as we are fasting during this Lentil period. Let us remember those who don't have a relationship with Christ. Let us remember those <coughs> those who are living contrary to the to the uh, the sanctity of the Christian life. Let us offer that one day fast for that person, for that group, that the Lord will somehow, through His miraculous and loving and kind way and His perfect timing, use us as those tools to bring back and to win that soul one more time and at the end of the day all glory is to be given to christ our lord our god our king our savior our life giver and the forgiver of our sins amen One last thing, please also don't forget to rate and review this podcast and share with your friends and family. If you'd like to suggest future episodes or give us detailed feedback, please visit the link in the description or on our Instagram, linktr.ee forward slash double edged sword. God bless you all.